just painted dogs because of their multicolored fur coats. Uh, of course, I knew that. Okay. <laughs> but did you also know that the Libby Desert has its very own family of African wild dogs with a litter of six adorable pups that were born just last spring? Yes, Claudia, they have gotten so big since I left on my trip. And having them is a huge achievement, not just for their parents, but for all efforts trying to ensure the future of the species. Because here's the thing, folks. Sadly, African wild dog numbers are decreasing. We used to find them all over Africa, and now every single one could fit inside this amphitheater. Well, don't worry, because the good news is that along with the Black Mambas and other wildlife organizations, we're working hard to bring back those wild populations. And everybody can contribute to the cause by adopting an African wild dog here at the Living Desert. Really? Yeah. Did you know that adoption helps support the feeding and care of our adorable family and provides funding for both conservation and research? If you all would like to learn more, please feel free to come on down at the very end of the show. Now, Daniela. Yes. Speaking of those black mambas, they're so brave and cool. I wish I could be just like them. Me too. But if I were to scare away some poachers, I think I would need some major backup. So does that mean that you have Wonder Woman on speed dial? Right, Even ladies? It's better. Everyone, I would like for you to meet our very own female cave porcupine, Kali. Let's go scare away some poachers. Come on. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. OK, folks, I saw these animals on my expedition, one of which was fending off an entire pride of lions by herself. Oh, that's <laughs> right. And for a rodent, they're pretty feisty when they have to be. And at 40 pounds, they're Africa's heaviest and largest rodent. Come here, Kali. Wait, does that mean they're a rodent of Circle. unusual size? Nice. <laughs> they certainly are. Kali, you ready? Let's go over here. Come on. And they're covered from head to toe in razor sharp quills. Oh. <laughs> when they're threatened, they flare up these quills. They stomp their feet, rattle their tail. And if that predator doesn't back off, huh, well, then that predator better dodge fast because then that porcupine's gonna turn straight backwards and run right into its face. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I guess that's one way to get your point across. <laughs> that's a good one. Bye, Kali. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> essentially, what I'm trying to say is, you know, I'm glad I kept a very safe distance. Well, that's probably for the best. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened next? Okay, so this next part's a little embarrassing. Oh, okay. Okay. So I had hardly had time to finish my long patrol with the Mambas when I had this very weird feeling that someone was staring at me. Oh no. And um, I turned around to see a pair of gigantic eyes staring at me from the underbrush. <gasps> I almost had a heart attack. Until I realized that those eyes, they weren't eyes. What? They were ears. They were ears. Oh, I know. I bet you saw uh -huh. the eye spot on the ears of a serval. Right! Yes, yes, yes! Oh, a serval! Yeah. Gotcha. Did you all know that these felines are one of the only two types of cats with both spots and stripes? A coat that is both beautiful and practical. It allows for them to blend into their surroundings. But unfortunately, there's a price for being so fashionable. Many humans are jealous of the serval style and want to copy their look leading to them being poached for their fur. Now, it can take up to nine cats of Naya's size just to make one human-sized coat. Oh. So, if you all want to be a cool cat, remember to go faux and not fur. Ooh, I love that, Claudia. Well, folks, it obviously makes sense that these cats need that coat right where it is. It allows the serval to hide long enough to ambush their prey from any direction using those long limbs that are proportionally the longest of any other cat species. And as she's already demonstrated, it doesn't matter if it's a mouse in a burrow or a bird flying through the air. They're gonna use those long legs to snatch them up. And faced with the turtle's nine foot vertical leap, it does make me glad that I personally do not have feathers. Me too, nice job, Naya. Did you see that amazing athleticism? So graceful. I definitely would have fallen on the way down. It would not have been pretty, folks. <laughs> and yeah. that is why servals have very short tails, because they don't want to land on them. OK, so they're not like the cheetah. Not like the cheetahs. Right. Wow, well, Daniela. You know what? It sounds like you had a pretty wild time in Africa. Yeah. Oh, I totally did. But to be honest, after traveling so far and wide and getting more than a 
a few blisters. I was ready to come back home to the living desert. Hmm? Oh, actually, you know what? That reminds me. Um, do you have a trash can I can throw all my garbage away in? You know, we didn't really have one handy on the savannas, and I'm trying to be really good about leaving no trace for wildlife to consume. Oh, thank you. Or get stuck in. Oh, perfect. Of course. Yeah. You know, we always have a trash can handy because keeping the environment clean means so much to us and to all of the animals that share the earth with us. It's true, and it's one easy thing that we can it do. definitely is. Yeah. You know, oh. being able to- Claudia, there's a goat! Oh! Oh, oh no. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, Claudia. Uh, that pesky mm. Nigerian dwarf goat must have followed me all the way home. Oh. Um, I am so sorry. What are we going to do? You know what? It's totally fine. You sure? I think I know someone who can help. You do? Yeah. Uh, Majani, we need you. Majani. Majani. Can you sing him? Okay. Oh, maybe if everybody says it together. Ready? Okay. Majani. Majani. <laughs> let's, let's hear it. Majani. <laughs> oh, Claudia. Yes. There's another goat. There he is. You all did it. <laughs> Where's he going? Hey, Majani. There he goes. Now, oh, Majani here is going to help us clean up our mess because you know what? Picking up trash is an easy way to help. And here in the Coachella Valley, we take trash very seriously because it has a huge impact on one of our most charismatic species, our California desert tortoise. Um, Claudia? Yes? I'm confused. Tortoises eat our trash? <laughs> Not exactly, but ravens do. Ravens. Okay, now you've lost me. Good job, Majani. He cleaned up the mess. Uh, Majani, do you ever want to come to my house? I have um, some rooms that need to be cleaned as well. Oh, uh, he's kind of a busy okay. go. Bye, Majani. Bye, Majani. Well, speaking of those ravens, ravens do not eat, or um, the the tortoises do not eat trash, but ravens do. Okay. And not many people know this, but ravens are a major predator of desert tortoise hatchlings. Really? Yeah. You know, ravens used to migrate through the deserts every single year, but now they're sticking around and breeding like crazy. Oh. And as a result, well, they're gobbling up tortoise hatchlings <gasps> left and right. Oh no, that's awful. Okay, well, now, Claudia, is there anything that we can do to help the adorable say reptile? Well, one of the reasons why ravens are sticking around is because We've provided them with a lot of extra food by leaving our leftovers in uncovered garbage cans. Oh. Now, Majani here did the first step by throwing away that trash, mm -hmm. but to really go the extra mile, we've got to put a lid on it to keep those ravens away. You know, one small action can make a world of difference for our adorable state reptile. Wow. You know, Claudia, I have always wanted to see a desert tortoise out in the wild. So in fact, the first thing I did when I got back to the States was go out hiking to look for one. Now, here's the thing. I was out hiking and I was really disappointed because I really didn't see any tortoises, but I did see a bird. And I did think it was a raven because it was uh -huh. black. Okay. But then, as I got a little bit closer, I realized that it wasn't a raven. It was a black vulture. Oh. And I know we can find them, not so much here, so I was a little confused why I saw one, even though it was cool. Well, Daniela, oftentimes, especially nowadays, yeah. many animals are being spotted outside of their native ranges due to something called climate change. And climate change is leading to a lot more uh, strange weather patterns, like uh -huh. hotter summers and wetter winters. And here in Southern California, well, this is leading to a lot of deadly wildfires. And as a result, it's driving animals outside of their normal ranges in search of more food and water. You know, global climate change is an issue that does affect us all, but here's the thing, we all can help. All we have to do is reduce our use of resources. Things like you know, driving less, eating more plant-based food, uh, food items, and even buying fewer plastic products. All of these things can help save our planet. And I'm sure Igor and her friends would really appreciate it. Oh, I bet they would. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. So cute little vulture. I know. <laughs> okay, Claudia, <clears throat> I'm going to be honest. I'm exhausted. Oh, I bet. But what a journey. You know, it sounds like you've discovered how all of our caring guests can make a positive impact on nature right from home. Yeah. All they have to do is adopt an animal right here at the Living Desert. Oh, um, literally recycling and putting a lid on it to help save those adorable desert tortoises. 
end, we can all work together to help fight against global climate change with just a few simple steps. It's true, and you all are helping us out right now just by coming to the zoo today. It's true, because if you didn't know it, the Living Desert is in the top 20% of zoos in terms of resources given to conservation. We work on site in 10 different countries from the far reaches of Africa to our very own backyard. We provide communities with the tools to be more effective in conservation and in education. And we work hands-on to bring back those wild populations of endangered plants and animals. And we couldn't do any of this without your ticket purchases, memberships, and donations. You know, it may seem difficult for one person to make a difference, but with all of us working together, I know we can help save the animals and our planet. So I want to leave you with something. One of my favorite quotes. We must make a difference, but we can make a difference, and I know we will make a difference. Now, thank you everybody so much for supporting us today. You've been an amazing audience. Please feel free to come on down, ask us any questions, and have the best day in the desert ever. Bye, thank everyone. You.